So good morning, everyone. Welcome to Intuit's 2016 Investor Day. It's good to see a lot of familiar faces here in the room in Mountain View and some new faces, as well as those who are joining us through telecast. As Jerry just walked you through, we have an action-packed agenda for you. Hopefully, you're going to find your time with us useful and productive today. But I want to step back and just share some reflections on fiscal year 16, which at Intuit was a strong year from start to finish. But it was also a strategically foundational year. And it was foundational in our journey to transform the company's business model from a North American desktop software company to a global cloud-driven product and platform company. So I'm going to focus my comments this morning providing context around our multi-year change journey and our fiscal year 16 results. Then I'm going to shift my view to the horizon and talk about the opportunities we see in the marketplace over the next five to 10 years. And then I'll lay out our game plan to capitalize on those opportunities and to accelerate our company's performance. Then as Jerry just walked you through, we'll have each of our leaders come up and talk to one of the six key priorities that will drive those outcomes. And then Neil will put a bow around it by walking through the financial outlook that we have as a result. So with that context, let me begin by looking back at our multi-year change journey. And our, la our latest chapter began in fiscal year 12. We had exited the recession with stronger momentum than many. But in fiscal year 12, we began to notice something. Our performance was starting to plateau. We were not out of gas, but if we plotted our performance on an S curve, a sigmoid curve, we were at this point. And we knew that there had to be an opportunity to step back and reassess. So we first looked externally at the marketplace. And as you may recall from last year, we saw four fundamental shifts in the market that we thought would be catalysts for future growth, or quite honestly, sources of potential disruption if we did not capitalize on these things. The first was the impact of social. Now, when we think social, we think LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. But social changed our expectations as end users. We no longer wanted to be customers. We now expected to be participants. We have been trained to choose our own news feeds, our own music to download, our own apps. And as a result, companies that were going to compete in this era couldn't just produce a static product that was one size fits all. This product now needed to become an open platform, a platform that enabled end users to customize the product just for them, and third-party developers to be able to add value while our engineers were sleeping. The second major shift was the adoption of the cloud. With the cloud, the borders came down. The borders between geographies disappeared. The expectations that an app would work across multiple devices became the norm. And we knew to compete in this era, we were going to have to lean in to becoming a cloud-driven global services company. The third was mobile. The mobile experience had prevailed. 2007, we all saw the computer move from the desktop to the palm of our hand in a, in a smartphone. By 2012, it had given way to tablets, wristwatches, eyeglasses, even automobiles. We knew we were going to have to step back and reimagine our products in a mobile first and mobile only world. And the last was data. Data promised to be the fuel for the next wave of innovation. We grew up in a generation where you never enter data twice. Key it into your software, it syncs up with banks, everything's automatically done. Data promised to move us to the next paradigm where you never enter data at all. It automatically pulls all the data from all the sources that you have and pre-fills all your product for you and you literally review it and hit send. That's an exciting chapter, but it also invited something else, cybercrime. So we knew we were going to have to lean in and protect and secure our data while using the data to create better products and better benefits for customers. So four big shifts in the marketplace that we saw that caused us to step back and look at ourselves in the mirror. And we knew we needed to change our business model. We needed to transform to this global product and platform company that was operating in the cloud. And we began a multi-year journey that for many of you who've been following us for years know all too well. We updated our strategy in fiscal year 12 to lean into the cloud, to have our products now redesigned for a mobile world. We opened up our products as platforms and even enabled competitors to work with them. And we began to capitalize on data to do some pretty cool things like doing your taxes on your mobile phone. We also updated our approach to innovation in the company. Scott Cook has taught us for years. Follow customers home. Find a big, important, unsolved problem that Intuit can solve well and look for a moat, build a durable competitive advantage. Well, as a platform company, it was no, no longer just problems that we could solve well, but also those who build on our platform. So we updated our innovation model, which, by the way, was the first time it had been updated since the company started. We also recognized in the fall of 2013, we were still organized as a desktop company. What does that mean? 
It wasn't too long ago you heard from general managers of payroll and a general manager of payments and a general manager of QuickBooks. And there was always debate about who was going to cross sell each other's products. We were organized inside out. So we began a restructure to organize around the customers. We now have a small business group, a consumer group, an accountant group. We're trying to create indispensable connections between them. We declared two goals in the fall of 2013. We want to be the operating system behind small business success, and we want to do the nation's taxes, whether it's do-it-yourself or with a CPA. And we carry the same three strategies forward from 2012. Of course, it takes you to the bottom of this page. Spring of 2014, we began to rewrite the architecture of our technology, turning it into services-oriented architecture with APIs so developers could build to our products, whether they were Intuit developers or others. We even refreshed our values, so we began to operate as one Intuit and not local teams. That took us to the spring of 2015. For the very first time in our company's history, we had a one Intuit product and platform roadmap across the company. And what you started to see, we began to resource teams that were solving two-sided problems. Accountants working with small businesses, small businesses working with third-party developers, small businesses working with lending institutions. And that took us to last summer. And I think many of you remember we stood here in front of you last summer and we had gone through a pretty massive restructure. We chose to divest three businesses that did not fit with our future. Quicken, Quick Base, and Demand Force. We finalized the restructure of the small business group into an ecosystem, and we reset the path forward. That was a lot of change. If it's hard to listen to, I can assure you it was painful for the organization to work through. But I am incredibly proud of our employees and of our management team because we were able to change the tires while the car was moving. Through this period of time, we leaned into the cloud. We grew our compounded annual growth rate of cloud customers 12% while we preserved and continued to delight a very important and profitable desktop customer base. We also shifted our revenue mix from 61% coming in from connected services to over 73% last year, and we expanded our global footprint. But this is the biggest opportunity of all. In this period of time, we have more than doubled our total addressable market. There are three things that have been driving our total addressable market. The first, with the adoption of cloud and mobile solutions, our categories are now growing faster than they have grown in a decade. No longer does a customer walk up to a shelf in a retail store, stare at a box of desktop software, and commit they're going to go home and really try it. Now they can go to a URL. They can download an app. They begin using it for free in a promotional period. And if it gives them benefit, they keep using it, and we bill them when the promotional period is over. You can see the numbers on this chart from fiscal year 16. QuickBooks being an example, the total active customer base, people who are on the last three years version plus the cloud, is up 3%. It had not grown in a decade. New users up 23%, paying users. So all of this is an opportunity for us to continue to grow. The second major driver of our TAM is now that we're leaning into being an ecosystem and a platform, we can solve additional problems for customers which enables us to drive up our ARPC. It's helping us drive increased penetration into the base of things like payroll and payments. But it's also allowing us to connect our ecosystem and even connect third-party products. Why is that important? This year, we had 15% of QBO customers attaching to a third-party software product. Last year, it was 10%. Here's what happens when they attach to at least one third-party software product, the retention of QBO goes up 10 points. That adds tremendous value to our ecosystem and to end to its bottom line. The last piece of our TAM driver is the ability now to serve new geographies and new customer segments. Over this four-year change journey, we rewrote QuickBooks Online as a global platform. We now took it to six countries outside the US. That expanded the prospect base by 150 million. Our prospect base had been 29 million. We have a huge amount of headroom ahead of us. And now we're going after the gig economy. Everyone's been talking about it. We've been going after it. We actually grew our QuickBooks self-employed base 3x over the last 12 months. So when you put a bow around our change journey, there's been a lot of change. But we have repositioned our company on the growth curve. We have expanded our total addressable market as we look ahead. And if you need reasons to believe, the proof points showed up in fiscal year 16. 
On a financial basis, we exceeded the top end of our guidance range on revenue, non-GAAP operating income, non-GAAP EPS, and even on QBO subscribers. And we had ra raised the QBO subscriber outlook. We had first given an outlook last August, and then in September we raised it, and we beat the top end of that as well. Now with that being said, I will tell you this. We have a strong foundation that we know we can build on. But for those of you who have been following into it for years, you know we're also constructively dissatisfied because we know there are things that we can do better. So what I want to do is I want to click down on fiscal year 16 for one minute. I want to walk you through the areas where I see us making real progress and areas where I think we have an opportunity to take our execution to the next level. And I'm also going to share with you a color coding. How green or red are we on every dimension? This is kind of inside baseball. It's the same thing we share, our we share with our board and with our employees. So let me start with our culture. This is honestly our secret sauce. 33-year-old startup, 8,000 employees trained to be entrepreneurs. We all follow an innovation model for 15 consecutive years have been in the top 100 best places to work. One of only two technology companies since it's been measured to be on the list for 15 consecutive years. With that being said, we're learning to operate as an ecosystem. Speed is where we have to lean in. We've got to get better at making faster decisions between teams, and we also have to get tools in the hands of our engineers so they can move a lot faster and be more productive. The second thing is our products are getting better. Since 2012, when we said we wanted to lean into our products, our net promoter scores are up, our conversion has improved, our retention has improved. But if you look to the right-hand side of this page, you're going to hear us talk a lot about the customer benefit. What is the single reason while the customer hired our product? And are we improving that in the customer's life? And believe me, it gets down to one thing. And so we want to make sure we know what that one thing is, and we're able to improve that with all the actions that we take. We are starting to operate more as an ecosystem. You saw the number of accountants connected to small businesses through QBO go to over 600,000 this year, which was a significant increase, almost 70 percent. We have third-party developer apps now numbering in the 1,200. That's more than double last year. But when you go to the right-hand side, we have not yet unlocked a network effect, where it literally starts to create more value the more people who participate, and it grows virally. But we are on a very promising trail, and we'll talk about six of them that we've resourced inside the company when Talo presents later. Speaking of Talo, our engineers have been tackling tech debt. When you were born 33 years ago on the era of DOS, that means along the way you have to be willing to refresh your technology and lean into the future. Our teams have been doing that, but we still have work to do to break our code bases down into services and to get our major product lines into the public cloud. And we have a roadmap to make that happen. Data is the fuel. Data, this past year, helped us improve awesome product experiences. TurboTax this year took 40% less time to file your taxes. Because of the W-2s we could download and the pictures you could take with your phone and import it into the product. Now we have to do that for all of our products and continue to use machine learning to be able to automatically make everything go away. Taxes are done, accounting is done, and bills are done. Security, I'll let Talo drill down on this later, but we made great progress as an industry, and we remain vigilant in making sure we keep cyber criminals out of the data and continue to keep our customers safe. Market results, if you listen to the earnings call, there was a lot of good news about expanding TAM, increasing share, but I also shared very candidly two areas where I know we're capable of more. Our QBO growth outside the United States at 45% is admirable, but not best we can be. We know we have an opportunity to take our game to the next level. We have a clear game plan and roadmap in place. We also have a wonderful new team member in Lucas Watson sitting over there on the side who joined us most recently from Google and prior to that 17 years at Procter & Gamble, and we're super excited about global. The other thing I would tell you we have an opportunity to take our game to the next level on is the pro-tax share. We continue to grow share in the do-it-yourself category, but we've held share for a couple years in a row in the pro-tax. You're going to hear Dan and Cece talk about using our assets from TurboTax, from QuickBooks, and from ProTax to reimagine the Pro experience and get that business growing again as well. I won't steal Neil's thunder. It's kind of hard to argue with last year's financial results, but what he will remind you of is we have financial principles 
to grow this comp company double digits organically on the top line and to expand our operating margins. And we want to consistently do that every year. And so we're going to talk about how we're going to hold ourselves to a higher bar to make that happen. So there's a lot here. The good news is anytime we focus on something on the right-hand side, we've demonstrated an ability to move it over to the left-hand side, and we're committed to doing that. The last piece of context before I set the stage for the presenters who will follow me is we have refreshed our outlook over the next 10 years. We've been going deep on these topics. These are the areas we think fundamentally will shape our product and technology roadmap and our go-to-market plans for the next decade. Social continues to have an impact. Social's next chapter is no one wants to do anything alone. They expect to have constant connectivity to trusted relationships, an accountant literally right there if they need them, a third-party developer, even a peer or a family member. You're going to hear that get embedded into our products. Machine learning, everyone's talking about it. We've been using it, we've been doing it, and we're going to accelerate because it is the next chapter of automation. Ecosystems and platforms, critical in our category. We've got to realize that everything we do is a two-party process. Accounting involves a small business and an accountant. Taxes involve a taxpayer and the government. We've got to create these kinds of connections. The fourth is mobile, but mobile's gone beyond touch. It's now voice. It's chatbots, it's Pokemon Go with augmented reality, virtual reality, and as radical as that sounds, believe it or not, it does apply to our space as well. And last but not least is cyber criminals continue to get smarter every day. So there are five themes you will hear us talk about throughout the remainder of the day. Deeply personalized experiences which are enabled by data and machine learning that do all the hard work for our customers so we literally can get to a point where taxes are done, accounting is done, and bills are done without you having to lift a finger. Ultimately, we're going to continue to create these indispensable connections across our ecosystem between accountants, small businesses, developers, banks, all the different parties. We are leaning into voice. We're leaning into video. We're leaning into chat, message bots. And all those capabilities are getting built into our product. And of course, security is being designed in. So what you'll hear us walk through today reflects the momentum that we've carried forward from fiscal year 16, these opportunities to improve our execution, and these five major themes that we think will create catalysts for the next chapter of growth. And it's all been put together in a one into it strategy. Our employees have this strategy. And they understand from our mission to our metrics what we're solving for and how their work fits in. What I want to do is quickly walk you through these and then set up the presenters to come up and take you through how we plan to deliver. Of course, you can never come to an Intuit Investor Day without being reminded of why this company got started. That kitchen table that sits out in the hallway is the original kitchen table from Scott Cook's house, where he watched his wife struggle to balance the family checkbook and said, there has to be a better way. And for 33 years, employees with Intuit badges have gotten out of bed with one purpose in mind, to improve our customers' financial lives, to power prosperity, to eliminate poverty, to increase the odds of success for small businesses. And over these 33 years, our company culture has embraced a set of values that have been refreshed and kept contemporary, but basically breaks down to this. We want to be a 33-year-old startup with 8,000 employees who believe they're entrepreneurs who wake up every day and try to improve their customer's life. And we channel that passion and those innovation skills against a common set of success metrics. This is how the board measures my performance. This is how every employee in the company's performance is measured. It is about delivering the best outcomes for these stakeholders in the current year, but also making decisions today that those who succeed us will have a better company to be able to run when we're gone. Now, what you see here have fiscal year 17 targets. I will tell you this. We also have a version of this that has fiscal year 18 and 19, and that is what all the senior leaders in the company's comp is tied to. My equity and all the senior VPs and above are tied to deliver 17, 18, and 19 as discrete years. Now, these are the goals that we measure ourselves against, and we have a game plan to deliver these outcomes. You should notice the strategy hasn't changed since fiscal year 12 and 13. It's the same three core customers, 
the same two strategic goals at the top, and the same three strategies that I talked about in fiscal year 12. What is different now is because we've gone through this transformation, we have the ability to deliver on this in a fundamentally different way than we could in fiscal year 12. First of all, delivering awesome products, we've now come to realize awesome is not measured by us, whether it's cool with fancy technology. It's about whether it made an improvement in the customer's life. So the center of the strategy includes the benefits that we now know matter most to these customers. And we measure these in every single meeting we have. The second part of our strategy is to become an open platform that creates network effects. You're going to hear Taylor Stansberry, our CTO, talk about six priorities we have right now that we have funded, that we actually ran experiments on over the last 12 months, and we've already seen the green shoots. Many of them didn't work, and we shut them down. These are the most promising ones that we're investing in. And last but not least is data will power everything in the next chapter of our strategy. We have a vision of eliminating six billion hours of tax prep drudgery making it easy for accountants to simply review their client's tax return instead of sit there and key it in through tax season. We want accounting to disappear so small businesses can just focus on running their business. And we never want anybody to have to worry about a bill again. That's where data comes in. So this is our strategy. Of course, we've broken it down into six priorities, and this is what you will hear about the remainder of the morning. These are the six key priorities that the leaders will walk you through. But I'll wrap up with this. If you put all that together, every employee in the company has this page in their workstation, at their desktop, in their cube, in their office. And it helps everybody understand what we're trying to do and how their work fits in. And what's exciting about it is over the last 12 months, we have increasing clarity. We continue to remain focused on this mission that began 33 years ago. We are clear now that we've divested quick base quick and, and, and demand force, that we have three core customer groups, and we have a definition of success for each of those three customer groups. We've then taken that definition of success and we've fish boned it back. That's basically just looking back at what are the key drivers to get to the ultimate thing they hire the product to do. And what's interesting is when you look across TurboTax, Mint, QuickBooks, payroll, payments, ProTax, all of that, they fall into three buckets. Our customers want everything done because, let's be honest, they don't get excited about paying an invoice or doing payroll or doing accounting or, goody, it's tax time again. The stuff we do is required. If they don't do it, there's a big consequence, but it's not desired, so they want it to be done for them. The second thing they want is they want more money in their pocket, a bigger refund, better cash flow. And last, if they have a definition of success, and it could be spending more time at home with my family during tax season, or it could be, I want to be the next into it as a small business, and I want to grow really quickly. We have to personalize the product to their outcome. And to deliver that, we have now defined the key technologies, the key engines, the machine learning, and we have invested all of these assets to be able to win and deliver over the next 10 years. There's a lot in there. What I hope you hear is a company that has continued to reimagine itself and over the last four years has made the transformation from a North American desktop software company to a global cloud-driven product and platform company. We have the wind at our backs as we exit fiscal year 16 with momentum. We know where we can, we can improve our execution and we see five big opportunities in the future that we've now built into our product plans. Now, the opportunity is to unpack what exactly we plan to do about that. So it is my pleasure to turn over the stage to Sasanga Darzi, who will walk you through the first of these six priorities, winning worldwide with the QBO ecosystem. Thank you.